In many problems, humans can make reasonable guesses about what sorts of solutions are most likely to work. At the very least, it may make more sense to try one solution before considering others. Such expert knowledge can be used in search problems in the form of heuristics. A star search is a particular search algorithm that makes use of a heuristic in order to more efficiently solve a search problem. A heuristic is simply a function that takes a state as input and returns a numerical estimate of the cost to reach the goal from that state. So here we have a bit of notation indicating that we have a function which happens to be named h, but the name is relevant, and that function maps from the set of states to the set of real numbers. That's what this uh, typeface r represents. So if I happen to have a state that was named d, then h of d could return some value like 4. It's just a function that takes a state and returns a number. So we have this function h, which we know equals the estimated heuristic cost from a state s to the goal state. I'm also going to introduce another function g, which also takes a state as input, and we're going to define this as the known actual cost from the start state to s. So once we're traversing a graph, we know how much it costs to get there from the start state. So s is just some state. Now using these two functions, I'm going to be able to apply a star search. A star search basically works the same way that uniform cost search does. Both algorithms use a priority queue. But in the case of A star search, the priority queue value of a state is the sum of these two values. In other words, the priority of S is the sum of the actual cost to reach S from the start state and the estimated cost to go from that state S onward to the goal. If h is a completely accurate heuristic, then the sum of these two values simply is the actual cost to go from the start to the goal via the state s. Let's see how this works in the search problem from the previous video. So in order to apply a star search to the same problem from the previous video, I've added these blue numbers into each node those are the heuristic estimates. So in other words, uh, the heuristic value of state A is 9, which means that H of A equals 9. Now the question of what G of A equals depends on how we reach A. If we go through this route, then the actual shortest cost to A is 5, and if we went this way, we would get a value 6. So since that's not going to be less, it'll end up being this. But let's see how that plays out as we actually go through the steps of the search solution process. So at first, the start state is the only state on the fringe, so we have no choice but to search there first. And I'll write out the search order here. So the first state we search is start. If we were to calculate the priority value of start, uh, the g of start would be 0 since we haven't actually traversed any edges yet, and the h value is 14, so 0 plus 14 is 14. So the overall cost uh, or estimate from start was indeed 14. Now at that point, we remove start from the fringe and we add its neighbors. So we have B on the fringe and C and A. And so now we compare the cost values for those three things. So for B, we have G of B plus H of B. Well, if we go from start to here, then G of B is 3 and h of b is the number in there. It is 14. 
So between those two values, uh, we get a total of 17. If we do the same thing with C and A, we get the following. So for C, we have 2 plus 15 also equals 17. And then for A, we have 5 plus 9 equals 14. So of those three options, 14 is the smallest. Therefore, A will be the next state we visit with a cost, or at least a priority, of 14. Moving on from there, we have to remove A from the fringe and then add its neighbor E to the fringe. So the search has gone from start to A, and we see that E is on the fringe, so we need to know what its priority value is. Well, G of E is 5 plus 3. Remember, it's the cost to get to E from the start. And because we discovered E via A, that is the route we take. So the overall cost uh, or priority value for E is 5 plus 3 plus the heuristic value of 7 to get 15. 15 is less than 17 and 17, so E will be the next thing we visit. And we will remove E from the fringe and then expand our search to go to that point. F and D are now both on the fringe, so we need to know what the priority cost estimates are to each of those nodes. So the cost estimate to F is 5 plus 3 plus 1, that's this 9, plus the heuristic value 5 to get 14. And the value to D is 5 plus 3 plus 4, that's this 12 here, plus that heuristic value 4 to get 16. So we could either go to F or to D, but because F has the lower value of 14, we will go there next and remove it from the fringe. But what is interesting now is that we can also reach D from F. So we have to consider what the overall estimate, in particular what the new G value is for D going through F. So if we go through F, the value to reach D is 5 plus 3 plus 1, and then plus 2, that would be 11, and then plus the heuristic value of 4 to get 15. That's less than the alternative route through here that was 16. So we're going to go to D, but sp specifically we're going to go via F. And at this point, the goal is on the fringe. The goal has a heuristic value of 0, and we know that the overall cost, if we add in this 5, will be 16. So g of goal, that's 16, plus h of the goal, I'll just use a g there, is 0. So that value is 16. Um, and it's also less than the 217 values there. All of these values have been. So we can finally go to the goal, add the goal to our list of search states, and we are done. So we searched the states start, A, E, F, D, and goal. We never wasted any time searching B or C. And it turns out that the states we searched are also the optimal solution. The optimal solution is to start here and to go to A, then E, then F, then D, then the goal. So by using this particular heuristic, we went directly from the start to the goal without any sidetracking or backtracking, which is really the best result you could possibly expect. However, I didn't tell you how H was defined. In fact, the only reason this works so well is because the values of H were defined in such a way to make it work out. What if H had had different values? We're going to do this problem again, but I've changed two of the heuristic values. The heuristic value of C is now 2, and the heuristic value of A is now 20. So what happens if we go through the same procedure but using these values? We would still 
search the start state first. But now, when we compare options, C looks unbelievably cheap because the G value to get there is 2 and the heuristic value is 2. That's only 4, which is much, l much less than the 5 plus 20 or the 3 plus 14. So we would check C next. From there, we have two options left, A and B. The cost or the priority value from A would be still the 5 plus 20, that's 25. This alternate route that has a cost of 6 is more expensive, so we don't consider it. And then the route down here is 14 plus 3, that's 17. So we don't go to A, we go to B next. In fact, A keeps looking terrible because with a value of 25, which by the way is much more than the actual cost to reach the goal from A, the alternate route from start to B to D will look more appealing because this route will have a cost of 10 plus 3 plus 4 is 17. So we'll go to D next. From here, the only options from D are F, E, and G. Now going to F or to E has higher costs because we're backtracking. But if we go straight from D to the goal, we'll be done. So that's what we'll do. We'll terminate early. We'll have searched fewer states, but the path we return, which is from start to B to D to goal, is not optimal. So it's very important that we have some rules for how we define heuristics. And those rules will be discussed in the next video.